simple packaging, which is good, simple, clean, I like that. And you have an instruction manual, which I've been looking through and it's really well written. Sometimes these manuals are not the best uh, in terms of translation, but this one's, this one's really good actually. Then we have the camera itself, the box with accessories and the mount. So let's look at each one separately. We'll start with the shape and size of this dash cam. This particular shape has been quite popular recently because it allows the dash cam to be installed high on the windshield so it does not get in our way when we're driving. Now on the front we have an LED indicator here and a speaker grill right here. Now the front camera is a Sony IMX335 imaging sensor which is capable of all the way up to 2K recording. Moving towards the back of the camera, this is the rear facing camera or cabin camera, also using a Sony sensor, the IMX307 sensor, which is capable of 1920 by 1080 high definition recording. Now in the center, we have an LCD screen, which is about one and a half inches in size. And the reason why it's small is because, again, we're trying to keep the size of the dash cam as small as possible. So therefore a small screen in here makes sense. Now our interactions with the menu is gonna be with the D-pad on this side, which can be clicked in all these directions and the center button for okay. Now moving on to the side, this is where the memory card can be inserted. This dash cam support memory cards all the way up to 256 gigabytes in size. Now moving towards the bottom, there's quite a bit of opening grills and also in the top for cooling. So the fact that this camera will stay cooler should help to make it last longer. Now also there is a little reset button here and a little microphone hole in here. Now, how do we power up the dash cam? Well, that is going to be done with this little USB-C port. That's great that they're using this newer type of port and they're moving away from the old school mini USB type. Now, let's talk about what this is. Now, this is what I mean for the mount. And I love when they integrate the mount into the camera in a way that it hides the cables or reduces the amount of wires that come out of our camera. It allows for a nice, clean installation that should look very professional. Let's look at the rest of the stuff that came with it. So we get this power cable, which again is the USB-C type. There's about 11 feet in length in here, so quite a bit of length for us to be able to reach the location in our car. And they'll include the cigarette lighter plug, and this is a great addition. I love when they do this because it doesn't tie up the cigarette lighter port entirely. We only need one port, and then it gives us a free port in case we wanted to charge our phone or anything else. Now let's look at the actual mount itself. Here's the mount. And what's great again about integrating the mount with the camera is that it provides a, not only that clean look, but you can integrate certain things into it. This camera supports GPS. Therefore, the GPS antenna was looks like it's hidden internally in here. So there's no secondary cable that I have to run somewhere. And I love that that keeps it uh, the installation nice and simple. And again, a clean look. Now, when you mount the uh, mount onto the camera, you can see that it actually can tilt. So that's great. We can have some flexibility of where we point the camera to. Now to mount this to our windshield, it is going to be as simple as peeling this off, exposing the adhesive, and then we'll stick this onto our windshield on the location of our choice. Now they also included a little trim installation tool, which would, can help us to hide this cable into our trim without removing any additional panels. So let's go install this on our car and let's take it out for a test drive. Okay, here's a Coxpal A9 D dash cam install. And I'm gonna turn this camera on manually. And that allows us to see how fast it turns on. Normally the camera is gonna turn on automatically every time you turn on your car. So you don't even have to think about it. Once it's installed, the camera is gonna do its job automatically. Okay, now that the screen is up, we can see that we are seeing both views at the same time. We see the front view and the rear view in this tiny little uh, corner in the upper left corner. But we can change that by using some of the buttons here. If I tap this button right here, I can show only the front, press it again, show the cabin view, press it again, and show both views at the same time. So that's good, it gives us the ability to customize the view. And also you'll notice that there's a lot of indicators on here that tell us the status of the camera. Before I go through those, let me show you some of the features that the dash cam has. Simple menu, there's only four sub menus. The first menu is gonna be the camera settings, where we can change the resolution of the camera. 
Now, this camera does support 2K video, but if I enable the 2K video, it's only gonna record the front video. If I wanna record both the front and the cabin, then I'm gonna have to go down to 1080p. Now, I've been playing around with the 2K and the 1080p, and I think running both the 1080 so far has been sufficient for me. Uh, so I leave mine at dual 1080HD. And then, if we go down to the next option, loop recording. All dash cams record videos in segments of video. And here you can change the length of that segment. I like to have something like three minutes. Three minutes is good because I don't end up with a lot of files in my memory card. I end up with nice files that are easy to search if I ever wanna look for a particular video. If I were to set that at one minute, I'll end up with a lot of one minute files in my memory card. So three minutes seems to be the best for me so far. The next uh, option in here is exposure uh, adjustment, uh, which is great. Let's say if we see that the camera is a little bit too dark in terms of, uh, I wanna see more details, we can bump up how much light enters the camera. So that's nice, we can give us good adjustability. Infrared LED, as I mentioned earlier, this camera does have infrared LEDs in here. They're not visible to us, but they light up the interior of the cabin so we can record in total darkness. Moving to the GPS, Inside of the GPS submenu, there are three choices. Well, first one is we can change the time zone. So by that, it, I, we mean that the camera automatically can set the clock for you. And it's gonna set that clock based on what time zone you tell it you are. So right now I'm in California, so I have that as GMT minus eight, and that gives me the correct time. We can also change the unit of the speed, such as miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So that's great if you're in a different country. And you can also turn off whether you want the actual video stamp, the speed to be shown in the camera video. I like to have that as on because yeah, I wanna show the speed. The G sensor, uh, this is an important feature because this dash cam will automatically detect when your car gets into a car crash. And it does that by sensing when the camera, when the car actually gets uh, jolted or hit. And the sensitivity of that sensor is controlled in here. Now I like to have it set in low uh, because if I were to have that in high, it will record every single little incident where the car bumped a little. And most of the time that's just a bumpy road. So it creates a lot of false alarms or false car accident recordings. So low I think has worked out for me. It would only record a real car crash. Moving down to parking monitor. This dash cam does have the ability to monitor your car when you're away from it and the car's completely off. But it can only do that if you hardwire the dash cam or if you somehow provide power to it all the time. Because remember, when you turn the car off, there's no power going to the dash cam. But if you were to hardwire it, you can enable the parking monitor option. And here you have a couple of choices. You can have it either record the actual video when something happens, or you can have it to record a time lapse. And the time lapse option is quite interesting because it's actually gonna take one picture every second. So it's one frame per second. So it creates a time lapse of the entire amount of time that you were away from your car. And you can also change the advanced settings within the parking monitor, such as how long should the camera monitor the car for, that's the so-called guard time. And you can also turn on or turn off the LED indicator, which is an LED that's in the front, and the LED when it's flashing, imagine nobody's in your car, kind of tells people, hey, watch out, the car, the car is being monitored and recorded. So that's good that they have a little indicator there. Now going back to the main menu, the next subset of menus contains the system settings. Within the system settings, we can change the things like date and time. But again, I like to have the GPS set that uh, automatically for me. The languages of the menu, which is pretty good if you wanna mess around with that. You can also change how much time elapses before the screen turns off. I like to have my screen on all the time, but you can turn that off. Uh, one interesting feature about this is that you could also set it so it displays your speed. So instead of the screen turning on, the video turns off, but this screen turns into a speedometer, literally, and it shows you your speed on here. So that's kind of cool. Frequency, uh, if there's only one option that you're gonna change in your dash cam, check this option out. Uh, the frequency should be set to 60 if you're in the US or 50 hertz if you're outside of the US. And that's just gonna prevent flickering of the lights that you are recorded by the dash cam. You can also adjust the sound, whether you wanna capture sound or not record the sound. Some people don't wanna have their conversations recorded. You can add the license plate number so it shows in the bottom of the video. 
Uh, and you can obviously format the entire memory card to blank it out and default the camera to its original settings. Now in the playback menu, we can see the videos that were recorded and they're organized in four folders that make it very easy for you to sort through. Uh, you have just the normal recordings, which are your everyday recordings, and then you have the events. The events are when the G-sensor G sen uh, detected that your car was jolted or hit and it'll record those in a separate folder because remember those are locked and they're not gonna get erased. But here you can see the normal videos and you can play them back. And right now it's playing a video of us uh, in here. And in the front menu, we have one last option, and that is gonna be the option for Wi-Fi. Now, why does this camera have Wi-Fi? Well, because this camera does have an app capability. So if you download the app, then you can connect directly to the dash cam, and then you don't have to worry about taking the memory card out to your computer. So that's pretty good, and you can choose to have the Wi-Fi on or off. Okay, now that we saw the features, now we go back to the main screen and we can see some of the indicators and what they mean. Uh, WDR, this camera does support wide dynamic range, which means it gives it the ability to see good at night and also during the day. So when there are bright uh, sources of light at night, such as a headlights that are shining your way, you can still see the detail in the shadows and vice versa during the day. If there's a bright light like the sun, the camera will adjust so you can still see the details and they don't get completely washed out. So that's good that we have that option on the wide dynamic range. We also see that we have the, the memory card install and that we're recording in three minute increments and that our microphone is on. But what if we want to have the sound recorded, but all of a sudden decide to have a top secret conversation? You can turn the microphone off, off temporarily by pressing down. Now the sound is no longer being recorded, only video. And I'm going to turn the sound back on. Okay, here we go. Now we're recording video and sound. And then this little P right here tells us whether we have the parking monitor enabled or not. Finally, on the upper right hand corner, we have the actual speed, whether we chose miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And in the bottom, you have your date and time and the elapsed time of how much time has been recorded. One thing that I like about the type of uh, detachable mounts like this is that you can take your camera with you. A lot of people don't want to leave it in the car, obviously to reduce the possibility of theft. So when the car is off, I can simply slide this dash cam and hide this away. So that's convenient. And that again, is advantageous to have a simple detachable mount. All right, let's go on to our test drive. And that completes the review of the Coxpal A90 dash cam. If you guys have any questions about the dash cam, please feel free to put it on the comments below. And I also have placed a link in the description if you guys are interested in looking at this dash cam further. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. But I have a lot more car product reviews coming up. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next upload. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.